The market versus democracy. In contemporary discussions surrounding society and politics, there exists a notable blind spot, the extent to which market capitalism and democracy can coexist harmoniously. This blindness stems from decades of pro-market narratives, particularly heightened during the Cold War era, which have cultivated a pervasive mythos. This myth suggests that the hierarchical structure inherent in our daily economic interactions, characterized by top-down control and bottom-up submission, somehow aligns with democratic values of choice, equality, and freedom. This assumption, though widely held, crumbles under scrutiny. Consider the trajectory of social progress over the past two centuries, marked by movements striving for equality, the eradication of discrimination, improvements in healthcare accessibility, and broader political inclusion. Advances such as the abolition of slavery, the fight for women's suffrage, and the establishment of LGBTQ rights exemplify this ongoing journey toward human rights and equality. Yet, amid these advancements, one domain remains largely untouched by meaningful progress, economics. Economic equality, crucial to the broader human rights agenda, often evades scrutiny, shielded by philosophical justifications and rhetorical deflections. Rather than confronting the structural inequities inherent in market economics, many opt for euphemistic gestures. For instance, phrases like equality of opportunity are touted as progressive ideals, masking the systemic barriers perpetuated by market forces. However, the fundamental flaw in this narrative lies in the inherent contradictions of market economics. The system, by design, precludes any genuine pursuit of equality of opportunity, rendering such aspirations hollow. Basic necessities like food, water, and shelter remain inaccessible to many, while the totalitarian structure of the market perpetuates inequality and undermines democratic principles. The very essence of market economics, with its emphasis on profit-driven decision-making and hierarchical power dynamics, stands in stark contrast to the principles of equality, fairness, and democratic participation. Ultimately, the crux of the matter is clear. Market economics and democracy are fundamentally incompatible. Any attempt to reconcile the two is an exercise in futility, as the systemic determinants of market capitalism inherently oppose the principles of democracy at every turn. Market dynamics, power, scarcity, and the illusion of freedom. In examining the dynamics of market economies, two critical aspects emerge, procedural dynamics and power distribution. Take, for instance, the notion of providing free access to basic necessities like food. While it seems humane and technically feasible, such a move disrupts the essential energy flow that fuels economic growth within the market. This disruption occurs because markets thrive on scarcity exploitation. By keeping goods and services scarce, they ensure a constant demand that drives economic activity. However, providing essentials for free diminishes this scarcity, leading to a slowdown in trade, loss of demand, job cuts, and eventually economic downturns. In essence, the market system is structured to collapse without the perpetual movement of money generated by keeping necessities scarce and people in constant need. Moreover, the market's influence extends beyond mere economic transactions. It dictates power dynamics, with wealth correlating directly to social influence. Those with significant financial resources wield power through land ownership, workforce leadership, lobbying efforts, political influence, and other means. This concentration of power perpetuates extreme wealth inequality, with a small fraction of the population holding a disproportionate share of global wealth. This inherent hierarchy-enforcing mechanism of market economics becomes evident when considering the consequences of deviating from its established norms. If basic needs were suddenly met without the necessity of labor, two significant shifts would occur. Firstly, individuals would have more time and less stress, potentially leading to increased social awareness and destabilizing the existing power structures. Secondly, the reduction in trade turnover would weaken the power establishment reliant on the constant extraction of wealth from the working class to maintain its dominance. Attempts by democratic institutions to rectify these imbalances are often met with resistance, as they challenge the core principles of the market system. Efforts such as social welfare programs or wealth redistribution face pushback from those advocating for free markets, 
perpetuating a cycle of market-centric policies that exacerbate real-world problems. Ultimately, the more the market adheres to its ideal of freedom, the more detrimental its effects become on societal well-being. This grim reality underscores the inherent flaws in attempting to reconcile market economics with democratic principles, revealing a system inherently designed to prioritize hierarchy and perpetuate inequality. Market Dystopia The Extremes of Free Market Capitalism Imagine a world where the principles of free market capitalism reign supreme, devoid of any external regulation or intervention. In this thought experiment, all decisions and outcomes are dictated solely by market forces, private property ownership, and the resulting power dynamics that emerge from mass transactions. In such a world, there would be no safety nets or governmental oversight. Every aspect of public health, democracy, income distribution, and environmental sustainability would be at the mercy of market behavior. The consequences of this extreme scenario would be dire. Firstly, without regulation, the market's relentless pursuit of profit would lead to rampant environmental destruction. The exploitation of scarce resources and the disregard for negative externalities would accelerate ecosystem collapse, exacerbating global crises. Secondly, wealth consolidation would skyrocket, creating a stark divide between the ultra-rich and the rest of society. The lack of social mobility would entrench this hierarchy, with those unable to afford basic necessities left to fend for themselves. Moreover, Monopolies and cartels would dominate global markets, wielding immense power over governments and individuals alike. Any legislative intervention would serve to preserve the status quo, further entrenching the dominance of the business elite. This dystopian vision underscores the inherent flaws of unchecked capitalism. Without democratic oversight, the market becomes a tool for oppression, reducing human rights to mere purchasing power. In the absence of intervention, Societal collapse becomes inevitable, as the pursuit of profit outweighs concerns for sustainability and equity. While this scenario may seem extreme, its parallels to current trends are undeniable. The rise of neoliberal ideology has led to a weakening of regulatory frameworks, allowing market forces to exert increasing influence over society. However, the solution does not lie in doubling down on free market principles. Rather, it requires a re-evaluation of our priorities and a recognition of the inherent limitations of market capitalism in promoting a just and sustainable society. Capitalist Coercion – The Illusion of Choice in a System of Economic Oppression Let's revisit the discussion on power, democracy, and the nuances of oppression within the framework of capitalism. Unlike the overtly centralized, bureaucratic hierarchy associated with traditional fascism as depicted in Orwell's 1984. Capitalism presents a more sophisticated form of control. Instead of a single oppressive entity, power is distributed among various nodes or entities, namely businesses, companies, and corporations. These business entities, as private owners of production means, form a network of hierarchical power. From the top down, they exploit the inherent vulnerabilities of the average worker, effectively coercing their submission to the system as a whole. This exploitation fundamentally violates human rights, creating a coercive environment where individuals are strategically disadvantaged by default if they lack familial ownership or surplus wealth. This coercion is further perpetuated by the financial mechanisms ingrained in capitalism, particularly the reliance on debt. Money itself is generated through debt, with interest accruing on non-existent money within the money supply. This perpetual deficit compels individuals to participate in the employment system, under the guise of contributing to society or ascribing to the belief in capitalism's supposed natural order. Essentially, market capitalism operates as a form of debt-driven slavery, where individuals are compelled to submit to the employment system in order to access basic necessities like food and shelter. Despite the illusion of choice in selecting which company to work for, this system narrows options based on individuals' economically constrained circumstances and skills. In essence, the freedom to choose between employers within this structure does not equate to genuine freedom. It mirrors a reverse slave market scenario, where individuals must select their owners from a limited pool of options, regardless of the coercive nature underlying their choices. Unveiling the rise of free market dominance, capitalism's role in the resurgence of fascism, 
The central aim of this piece is to shed light on a concerning trend in global society. The increasing dominance of free market ideology, reshaping the world in its image, with detrimental consequences. The era of the state regulation market hybrid is waning, making way for a resurgence of pure free market principles. While the state may continue to exist superficially, its role as a regulatory force is diminishing, allowing the market to operate with increasing freedom. In this evolving landscape, the state begins to resemble just another corporation, competing for its own business advantage. This shift is not a recent development. Conservative proponents of free market ideology have long blamed state intervention for social disorder, advocating for the deregulation of markets. However, in recent years, this push has intensified at an alarming rate, as I will delve into later in this article. But before exploring these contemporary developments, it's essential to delve into theory and history to better understand the relationship between capitalism and fascism, as capitalism serves as the foundational precondition for fascism in today's world. The Red Scare Revisited Capitalism's Propaganda Weapon The emergence of the Soviet Union in the early 20th century introduced a potent symbol that has played a crucial role in bolstering the perceived supremacy of market capitalism, communism. Often used interchangeably with socialism or Marxism, these terms serve as convenient targets in defending capitalism. It's important to clarify that socialism, communism, and Marxism are not predefined systems. They lack a specific structure, map, or blueprint. Instead, they represent varying degrees of deviation from capitalist practices. Criticizing these ideologies as inherently flawed or dysfunctional is misguided, rooted in symbolic propaganda rather than substantive critique. The merit or critique of the Soviet Union's so-called communist structure is separate from broader ideological debates. Whether viewed positively or negatively, the USSR's system was unique to itself, shaped by bureaucratic decision-making rather than any predefined communist framework. Unlike capitalism, which operates within a measurable system defined by trade dynamics, communism lacks a shared code or inherent structure. It's more of a philosophical departure from certain aspects of capitalism than a distinct system in itself. During the tumultuous early to mid-20th century, as the U.S. and Europe grappled with economic crises like the Great Depression and growing discontent with harsh industrial conditions, capitalism faced scrutiny. To counter this, proponents of capitalism launched a mass public relations campaign using the USSR as a scapegoat and boogeyman. Ironically, the USSR became capitalism's greatest threat and marketing tool. Anti-communist propaganda aimed to reinforce support for the capitalist system by juxtaposing it with the perceived failures of communism. This false duality persists today, with capitalist powers like the U.S. using tactics such as sanctions and sabotage to undermine nations perceived as socialist or communist. The goal is to prevent any challenge to the capitalist hegemony, maintaining the illusion of its superiority. Any perceived threat to market capitalism must be neutralized even if it means distorting the realities of other economic systems or countries. Pandering to Equality, the Market's Illusionary Promise During the rise of the Industrial Revolution in the early to mid-20th century, proponents of market capitalism attempted to capitalize on some moral themes associated with communism. They promoted the idea that mass consumption was the key to achieving the egalitarian goals of communism or socialism. This narrative, exemplified by John Maynard Keynes in his 1929 essay, For Our Grandchildren, painted a picture of private enterprise leading to shorter work weeks, higher wages, and the end of poverty through technological abundance. However, these promises never materialized. Market capitalism has not inherently adapted towards egalitarianism or improved labor rights. Instead, any progress in these areas has been the result of interventionist policies implemented through democratic processes, maintaining a regulatory chokehold on capitalism. The illusion of increased human rights and equality has been perpetuated by rampant overproduction and consumption, which, while increasing living standards, has also been wasteful and unsustainable. Economic growth has become synonymous with poverty reduction, overshadowing the potential for direct intervention to address poverty. 
This delusional theme of marketizing every problem to avoid non-market intervention is pervasive. Attempts like carbon credits to curb pollution have failed, demonstrating the limitations of relying solely on market forces. Some even advocate for the privatization of legislation and enforcement, further blurring the line between state and market. In response to the harsh realities of industrial capitalism, regulatory measures were introduced to address public health and oppressive conditions. While these reforms were necessary, they also served to compete with the ideals of communism and win public opinion. However, with the fall of the USSR, the narrative shifted. Pro-market forces no longer needed to tolerate interventionist policies to counter communism. This led to a gradual erosion of regulatory institutions, labor rights, and social welfare programs. The goal became a return to a deregulated, laissez-faire condition, with the market economy seen as the savior and the democratic state as the new enemy. The spread of neoliberalism in the 1990s further cemented this orthodoxy, labeling any deviation from free market principles as undemocratic. This trajectory continues to shape our modern world, with market capitalism tightening its grip and dismantling regulatory safeguards in its pursuit of unchecked dominance. The Fundamental Debate – Free Markets versus Alternatives At the heart of today's socio-political discourse lies a pivotal debate, one that transcends traditional left-right or conservative-progressive divides. It's a clash between those who champion the ideology of free markets as sacrosanct and those who advocate for alternative systems, recognizing the inherent flaws in unfettered capitalism and calling for greater regulation or even systemic overhaul. While discussions often revolve around specific issues like abortion rights, police brutality, or political corruption, their roots can often be traced back to fundamental beliefs about the role of markets versus the role of the state in shaping society. This dichotomy is often oversimplified as a battle between individual freedom, markets, and oppressive coercion, state power, perpetuating complex belief systems with similar themes. However, amidst these debates, one critical issue often gets sidelined. Environmental sustainability. Free market fundamentalism, with its emphasis on cyclical consumption and infinite economic growth, poses an existential threat to our planet. The relentless pursuit of profit at the expense of environmental degradation renders all other arguments moot. Moreover, the intrinsic structure of capitalism undermines democratic principles at every level from the hierarchical power dynamics within businesses to the systemic exploitation of the common citizenry. Attempts to mitigate these harms through interventionist regulation have been met with resistance from market proponents seeking to preserve their perceived freedom. As we continue down the path of free market fundamentalism, two alarming trends converge, the inherent authoritarianism of capitalism and the escalating social and environmental crises. This toxic combination is likely to breed increased authoritarianism and fascism, fueled by fear, confusion, and misplaced blame. To counter this trajectory, we need bold structural changes and innovative economic alternatives that can replace the current system. We must resist the relentless push towards free market purism and actively oppose policies that exacerbate social and environmental problems. While some may argue that things must worsen before they can improve, such rhetoric ignores the irreversible damage that can result from environmental degradation. Without immediate action to address these pressing issues, any attempts at social or political revolution will be futile. In the absence of a viable alternative, we must remain vigilant in our efforts to combat free market fundamentalism and its detrimental effects on society and the environment. It's not just about resisting the status quo. It's about actively working towards a better future for all. The truth about our democracy? For those who have peeled back the layers of illusions surrounding representative democracy, the suggestion to go out and vote is met with profound skepticism. The electoral process, entangled within the confines of market capitalism, appears feeble and corrupt, offering little real power to the public. Elected officials often prioritize personal gain over public welfare perpetuating a cycle of self-interest and corporate influence. I call for a boycott of the electoral system to highlight its inherent flaws and demand systemic change. However, such gestures of rejection are only effective if accompanied by viable alternatives.
Economic transformation and the implementation of direct democratic mechanisms are essential for true political change. Despite its shortcomings, there is still a role for participation in the electoral process. However, the focus must shift away from individuals or parties and towards policy objectives. Candidates advocating for environmental sustainability and human rights and opposing the unchecked expansion of market capitalism deserve support. Any candidate promoting libertarian or market-oriented views perpetuates the toxic trends of capitalism and threatens environmental collapse. It's time to dispel the notion that voting for a candidate equates to endorsing them personally. Instead, voters should prioritize policy context and systemic change over individual preferences. The act of voting should be viewed as a strategic tool for advancing policy objectives, rather than a symbol of personal identity. It's time to move beyond the false dichotomy of lesser evils and focus on challenging the capitalist system at its core. Here are some guidelines to follow when deciding who to support through voting. Avoid supporting candidates who advocate for 1. Deregulation of industries like finance, telecommunications, and energy. 2. Privatization of public services such as transportation, healthcare, and education. 3. Reduction of corporate taxes and tax benefits for the wealthy. 4. Free trade agreements that aim to lower tariffs and trade barriers. 5. Decreased government intervention in the economy, including weak enforcement of antitrust laws. 6. Promoting market competition and consumer choice as the main drivers of economic growth. 7. Weakening labor unions and reducing worker protections in the labor market. 8. Emphasizing individual responsibility and self-regulation within the market. 9. Minimal government interference in pricing mechanisms and market dynamics. 10. Cutting government spending on social welfare programs, advocating for privatization or reduction of entitlements. Instead, consider supporting candidates who advocate for 1. Implementing comprehensive regulatory frameworks to oversee industries and protect consumers and the environment. 2. Expanding social welfare programs, such as universal health care, unemployment benefits, and social security. 3. Strengthening labor rights and supporting unionization to negotiate fair wages and working conditions. 4. Adopting progressive taxation policies to redistribute wealth and address income inequality. 5. Promoting sustainable development and environmental protection through strict regulations on pollution and resource extraction. 6. Establishing public ownership or control over key industries and utilities to ensure equitable access and prevent monopolies. 7. Investing in public infrastructure and services to address societal needs and promote economic development. 8. Enforcing antitrust laws to prevent monopolistic practices and promote fair competition in the market. 9. Supporting consumer protection measures, including product safety standards and regulations on deceptive advertising. 10. Implementing financial regulations to stabilize markets, prevent fraud, and protect investors and consumers from economic downturns. While voting may not be the ultimate solution to all societal issues, it is one of the means available to work towards positive change. By actively participating in the electoral process, even if it means choosing the lesser evil, individuals contribute to holding back destructive policies and buying time to overhaul the economic system. The ultimate goal should be to create a sustainable, egalitarian democracy that prioritizes human rights and resource distribution. Until then, it's crucial to resist the influence of market-driven ideologies and fight against policies that threaten the well-being of society.